through my career or through my life, I've been very, very close to two major capital felony events. One, when my nephew at 23 years old was bludgeoned to death and murdered. And I hear people say how they don't want uh, people that are against uh, or for the abolishment of the death penalty say they don't want to go through and hear this every time. Well, for the last 35 years, any time a murder I hear on TV or my sister hears on TV, it brings all the memories back. Nothing's ever going to change that. The only thing that will bring it someday is the solution where it's finalized and the murderers are put to death. The other second one I had was right down the street from me. I was there the morning of the Pettit murders. I saw the murderers in their car crash into the police car. And when I found out what happened, the police let me in behind the lines, I guess because I was a state rep and they saw my license plate. This was only five doors from my house. And when I was told what happened and learned what happened, how Dr. Pettit was tied up, battered with a baseball bat, split his head open, and then threw him down the cellar, considering him dead, and then went upstairs and tied a 17-year-old and an 11-year-old to their bed, raped the 11-year-old. Then one of them went to the bank with the mother, drew money out, came back, and when he got back, he strangled the mother and raped her after he strangled her and killed her. And we want these type of people not to face the death penalty. We in this chamber are showing sympathy for the murderers and not sympathy for the victims' families. We're wrong. Then what they did, they, with the girls tied to the bed and the mother dead, they poured gasoline over them and lit them and they burnt. Haley the older one managed to get out of bed, made it to the top of the steps, but died of smoke inhalation. Michaela, the 11 year old that was raped and tied to the bed, was ashes on the bed, a body badly burned and taken out. And we say here that Kamer Javesky and Hayes don't deserve the death penalty? Shame on us. They do deserve the penalty. And so do many of the others, such as killing a police officer or killing a correction officer. And, and what do we do if somebody in prison who has nothing to lose now, he's in prison for life without the possibility of parole, kills a correction officer, what penalty does he face? And I can assure you it's probably going to happen because they don't have any penalty to face. So I really wish that people would reconsider their vote and vote not to abolish the death penalty, as I will do. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Representative Adnolfi. Will you